And we're back with more of the Pope on film. Night is very dramatic. It's time, buddy! It is time. Yes, buddy, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to cha-cha real smooth into the second half of the show. And it is said second half wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all-new low-fat, same great taste, but with half the calories movie of the week. And this week, we continue our summer-long look at COVID exploitation films, verbal copyright 2022, Reverend Steve and the Pope on film, with a look at the ridiculous 2020 film, Corona Zombies. And let me explain uh, the reason why we're doing this film. Last week, we did the Mitesh Patel film, Anti-Coronavirus, or as I called it, Fake Crying the Movie, and that was shit. Yes, it was. That was so bad, and it was so heavy-handed and so sappy and so badly written and so badly acted and so badly done that when I learned that the film uh, had its roots in Tucson, Arizona, that's when everything made sense. But uh, the movie was such a downer that we weren't going to do Corona Zombies, but I was pretty sure that this film was at least so dumb that it was fun. So it's full moon features. At least we can try and have some... At least... the. There's not a lot of these COVID exploitation films that are fun in any way. Yeah. A lot of them are, are like, hey, we're poking fun at the coronavirus because it's really silly because it doesn't exist because of the dirty liberals and the Jews. And it's like, okay, well, this isn't any fun. And the other ones are a serious look at the dangers of the coronavirus. And it's like, that's not fun. But at the very least, The makers of Corona Zombies tried to have some fun with it, and there were one or two moments interspersed with some dumb, stupid, idiotic jokes where I did find myself laughing. Well, that's that's what I was saying before we were so rudely interrupted. Yes. What what was your perfect uh, description of this film? This movie is amusing that weaves in and out of obnoxious. Yes, it had its moments. I there was a line that was so good I wrote it down. Nothing like a tight ass and a face full of clown makeup to help try and stop a worldwide pandemic. That's a gold freaking line of dialogue. Yes, yes. Then the rest of it is just stupid. Then you got huge patches of stupidity. Yeah, and misogyny. And then I and then I like like I read about it, and then it's like, oh, so this is a modern day take on What's Up, Tiger Lily, which is a Woody Allen film that I actually enjoy, despite the fact that at the end of it, it's an Asian woman doing a striptease, and Woody Allen's like, I promised I'd get her in the picture somehow, and it's like, oh. You married your daughter, so the end of this film takes a decidedly different turn. Yes. When you know that story. But, like, watching this movie, I'm such a big fan of What's Up, Tiger Lily, where a very young Woody Allen bought the rights to a, a Japanese spy movie and redubbed it to be about an egg salad sandwich recipe, I think? Yes. Is what it is? The like, greatest egg salad sandwich recipe. Yeah, I'm such, such a big fan of that stupid movie, movie that while I was watching Corona Zombies, Zombies I expected the filmmakers to add in scenes where the uh, uh, eleven spoonful showed up. Yeah. Yes, Woody Allen. The the way that that it is is it. 
My dad went to go see it at the Douglas, Arizona drive-in when he was younger because Woody Allen was a comedian and he wrote books and it was really funny and this was Woody Allen's first film and everyone was all excited that Woody Allen was going to make the film so they went to go see this movie and like the first five minutes were all in Japanese with no explanation. And people, and people at the drive-in drive were, were pissed, and they were yelling, yelling and screaming and, screaming and honking their horns. horns. They, had they had to stop the movie, and the manager of the drive-in drive had to come out and tell everyone, Look, this, this is the movie you pay for. I am sorry. And then eventually, Woody Allen shows, shows up, and the, the way that he explains it is, they paid me a million dollars to make the greatest spy movie. So I bought on the cheap the rights to a Japanese film and just dubbed it. And I'm keeping the rest of the money to myself. And so he just does a Japanese movie and then just appears like a couple of times during it to say a few things. And it's so stupid, it's fucking wonderful. It's the only movie of his that I can stand. Yeah, he, he bought the rights to a Japanese film and dubbed it. And it's so stupid. Like there's one film where there's one scene in the beginning where it's this bad guy like, like breaks into, into a, a house, house to try and kill the spy, and he's like, "Who do you work for? Who do you work for?" And the bad guy goes, Ugh, uh, no, "No one. one. I freelance." <sighs> yeah, I, I love, love this stupid movie. movie. Yeah, a lot of it comes from there. So, so, so this movie, Corona Zombies, they literally just got. A 1980 Italian, Italian film called Hell of the Living Dead. Dead. And, and they, they got, got one of their, their own company's movies called Zombies vs. Strippers. And got actual news clips and like clips of Donald Trump. Trump. And they, they edited, edited it, they edited it and, and dubbed it into a six, into a 61 minute movie where it's about how the coronavirus is turning into the zombies. Basically. Yes. The end of the podcast, because basically that's, that's it. it. But, but one, one thing, thing that I did want to mention... Oh, that's very pretty. That's very pretty. Thank you. One thing, we should sit down and watch What's Up, because that movie is great. Okay, but now my question is wonderful film. film. The Corona Zombies? And the listening in on our hands. Yes, yes, what about that? Isn't that what I said? What? That, that, that the coronavirus, coronavirus was going to turn people, people into zombies? zombies? Yeah, yeah that, that is totally what said. And that's basically the, the plot of this movie. That it, made anyone, that it, was to me. it should go to you. It, it should absolutely go to you. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to sue, sue Charles Van. Van. So, so this, this isn't, isn't just a full moon picture, picture production, Bonnie. Oh, no, my friend. This, this movie was directed by Mr. Charles Van, the founder of full moon pictures. The man who also directed a parasite, Prancers, Prehysteria, Evil Bong, The Ginger Dead Man, a few of the puppet master films, and also a little flick from 1992, maybe you've heard of it, Dr. Mordred? Yes. Which, if you want to learn more about Dr. Mordred, be sure to listen to the Pope on Film, episode 291. It's also one of the films they're doing in this new uh, self uh, fan funded season of Mystery Science Theater. Yeah. That you, you get to watch the episodes if you pay for it, and then it'll, you get to go to a special website where you get to watch it. I. 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 I, I, I love Mystery Science Theater in theory. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And they replaced the person again. So Jonah is and gone. Now it's, and... a woman. now it's a woman in space. It's no longer the, the guy who was looking for Josh Jewel Ray. And I'm sorry, Joel, you're not dead. Get your ass on the fucking camera. Yeah. Joel is still kicking. kicking. Yeah, it's yeah, still, still Felicia Day and uh, dude. Dude. Patton Oswalt. Dead, Dead wife, wife, dude. Why 
wife died of like cancer. Yeah. He was left with a kid. Now he's happily married again. Another person. Uh, he, he is, is happily married to the actress who starred in the '80s Disney film *The Journey of Natty Dan*. And I had the biggest fucking crush on her when I was a kid. So when I learned that Patton Oswalt is married to the woman who I had a crush on when I was a child, that blew my mind. Uh, Pat Oswalt might as well be married to no one right here. You know, when it comes to crushes from my childhood. Fuck. So, uh, Corona Zombies. The movie was rushed. So damn hard. This movie was rushed so much that it was released on April 10th, 2020. Nice. The lockdown started like March 10th. So they literally made this movie in 20 days and rushed it out as a digital download in the hopes of just being like last week's movie, Anti-Coronavirus by Mitesh Patel. They just rushed into this in the hopes of being one of the first people to make a movie about the coronavirus. They, uh, Corona Zombies wasn't the first film to come out about the coronavirus, but they were one of the first. So that's one of the positives of uh, just what's up, Tiger Lily in the movie, is that you can do that stuff on quick. Yes. Now, my, my question here is if you are doing a parody of a movie that is parodying Dawn of the Dead, are you also, in fact, parodying Dawn of the Dead? Yeah, that's the thing about Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead and Night of the Living Dead is that I don't know the 1980 Italian film Hell of the Living Dead that comprises the majority of this film, but if uh, uh, George Romero taught me anything, it's that at the end of the film, everyone will die. Yes. In some way. And so it's like, oh, we're going back to the soup manufacturing plant. Okay, I'm going to assume that everyone there is a zombie and they're going to die. Oh, spoiler alert for Corona Zombies. Yes. Spoiler alert for a 1980s Italian film, but it, most of the time, if you're watching a zombie film, there's a good... It, it, it's a somewhat safe bet. What? Everyone's going to die at the end. Okay, yeah. Yes. Yep. Unless it's zombie. I, I saw the second zombie movie the day it came out. I could not tell you at all what happened except for an end credit scene with Bill Murray. I couldn't tell you anything else that happened in the entire film. And I was so excited for a second zombie film, but I couldn't tell you anything that happens other than what happens to Bill Murray. So something tells me there won't be a third. And I'm not crying about that. I'm going to get on estrogen, Bunny. Yes, you are. There's not a lot. It's Corona Zombies, the movie. Whatever you're thinking, when you hear Corona Zombies, it happened. What? There's a, there's a shortage of toilet paper? Zombies. There's a few uh, parts of the film that were actually filmed, and it's this blonde woman, Barbie, talking to her best friend, Kendra, and they're like, oh my god, girl, you, 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 you need, you don't have, huh? No, 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 it's, no, it's just two. One of them, I think, lives in a trailer park. Apparently, the Corona Zombies uh, was so successful that they made two sequels, Barbie and Kendra save the Tiger King. And Barbie and Kendra storm Area 51. Naruto run? I'm assuming. I would not watch those films if my life depended on it. No. No. It's like that scene. 
from Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory? Don't you hear me? It's your husband's life or your case of Wonka bars. How long do I have to think it over? We're either going to kill you, or you're going to sit down and watch Harvey and Kendra save the Tiger King, and it's like, well... Yeah, it would be, but that does look amazing. That does look amazing. Yeah. What is that? Oh, I made chocolate chip pancakes, and uh, Eleanor prefers the blue color syrup that she put in umbrella and sprinkles. It's blue Captain, Captain Crunch, Crunch flavored, flavored syrup. syrup. And, well, it has Captain Crunch on it. Captain Crunch's ocean blue artificial maple flavored syrup. I think I did a video about it on like its channel, but it's blue Captain Crunch maple syrup, and it's great. I love this stuff. Maybe it's just maple syrup flavored. Yeah. Blue maple syrup. Blue is blue flavor. It's blue flavored maple syrup. My favorite flavor is blue. Yeah. Yeah. Jeannie raises the important question what does blue taste like? It tastes like all of those old school York peppermint patty commercials. When I taste the great flavor of blue, I feel like I'm skiing on top of a mountain. You know one of those commercials? Yes. York peppermint patties? Are those still a thing? They, they are? I know not the commercials, but York peppermint patties are still a thing? I always hated them. Junior Mints, yeah, Junior Mints. Yeah, they were like the dad of Junior Mints' children. Corona Zombies, this movie was so damn rushed, so damn hard. The lockdown started in March 2020, and total crazy beast Charlie Band pretty much immediately started working on this film, which uses dubbed over footage of a 1980s Italian film a uh, Hell of the Living Dead, and a film called Zombies vs. Strippers, as well as actual news clips. It's a modern day, what's up, Tiger Lily? It's dumb, stupid fun, but it gets really annoying. But then there are parts that are funny. I, it, The thing that pisses me off about The Walking Dead is that they live in a universe where they haven't, where they didn't know what zombies were before zombies appeared. That pisses me off. Yes. I want a zombie movie. I like zombie movies where it's like... That's one of the things that I... I that's one of the things that I liked about... Fuck. What, what was the name of that weird-ass movie? The Dead Don't Die! Yes. That was one of the things about the, about the movie The Dead Don't Die that I like so much. Huh. All these people have been destroyed. What do you think caused it? Probably a wild animal. Or maybe two. What do you think? Yeah, I'm thinking a wild animal. Or two. What do you think? And it's just Kylo Ren going, uh, zombies? I'm thinking it's zombies. So I don't like The Walking Dead because it's like, oh no, these, these, these dead living walkers. And it's like, I, I just want a zombie movie where, where it's like, like shit. shit. A, a lifetime, lifetime of watching George Romero films is about to pay the fuck off. Yes. Let's go to fucking Home Depot. We're ready for this shit. I've been prepared all my life for this. I, I, have, I have a back covered in barbed wire signed by Mick Foley that has been waiting for this exact fucking moment. Yes. So, so, so like, like I, I appreciate this film, like, like they have some of the characters named, like, named after famous, like, zombie movie directors, like... Argento. Argento and, and stuff like that. Like, oh, I like that. That's a cute little nod. Yeah. But also, this gets real fucking annoying. It does. That's exactly it. It gets funny sometimes. Crystal is confusing. But not enough. Like, that, another thing that I liked about this movie is that
that just like What's Up Tiger Lily, the plot is confusing, but also you don't have to pay attention to the plot. No. There aren't a lot of movies out there where the plot doesn't matter. But it, Casino Royale is one of those films. What's Up Tiger Lily is one of those films, and Corona Zombies. I, I don't know who have, I don't know who any of these people are that aren't the reporter lady. Yes. I don't know who any of these other people are. I know the reporter lady, I know the camera guy, no idea who any of these other fuckers are or what they're doing, but it's fine. It's yes. Fine. Just sit and watch. It's it's fine. But so it was not as much fun as I thought it was going to be, because when I downloaded the trailer, it was like, okay, this looks like it could be fun. It looks like a, it looks like a Dawn and a Dead parody, yeah. you know. And they were definitely taking some of the same shots from Dawn and a Dead that you could see in the trailer, and then having watched it, it's like. Uh, not really, you know? Yeah. And in the first couple of minutes, I was like, they're dubbed. Are they overdubbing their voices? And I had to look it up on Wikipedia, you know, to make sure I knew what I was seeing here. Wikipedia? The free online dictionary that anyone can edit? Yes. Yes. Now... Well, I need to just mention Wikipedia, the free online dictionary that anyone can edit. Encyclopedia. The online encyclopedia that anyone can edit. Yeah. Yes. We're big fans of Wikipedia here, the free online encyclopedia that anyone can edit. I, I am a big fan of Wikipedia for information that I want to know but don't necessarily care if it's true. That I mentioned that to an old lady when I worked at the bookstore. She, I was, she wanted to find this book on Wikipedia in the business section. We had it, and I gave it to her, and she said, "Have you heard of this Wikipedia thing? It's anyone can edit it. Why would you believe any of the the proof on there? Why would anyone use it?" And I said, "Well, I use it." And she's like, "Well, why would you use it?" And I said, "Well, I wouldn't use it for a paper." I wouldn't use it if I'm learning about World War II or learning about a famous Civil War battle or learning about the life of a president. But if I want to know the names of the two actors who played the same character on Bewitched, Wikipedia. Yeah. Free online encyclopedia that anyone can edit. Yeah. It's something I would go to for important things, but if I want to know about the cast of All in the Family, Wikipedia. If everything that I read and learned about Corona Zombies from reading its Wikipedia Wikipedia page turns out to be horribly, horribly wrong, so the fuck what? Yeah. yeah. It's Corona Zombies. Wikipedia also really helps me sometimes with movies. Like, uh, I went to see the movie The Lighthouse. And then when I was done watching the movie Lighthouse, I'm like, I'm really confused. I better turn to Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia that anyone can edit. It's like, okay, this helps me a little. Yes. I understand the plot a little bit more. I did that with the movie Men, the British horror movie Men that came out this year. And once I was done, I was like, what the fuck was this? <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a job for Wikipedia, the free online dictionary that anyone can edit. The free online encyclopedia. But it didn't help me either. No. The, the movie, the, whole, the British horror movie Men was so confusing that I came home and Natasha said, so did you like the movie? And I, all I did was give her the, passage, the plot of the movie Men from Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia that anyone can edit, and she read the film, and she read the plot on Wikipedia and went, what the fuck did I just read? And I'm like, yeah, imagine me in an empty movie theater. It's an incredible film, and everyone should watch it. But anyway. so, so were you feeling like uh, that one guy in the movie trailer when he, when he came out and asked how he liked the movie, and he just said, 
Yeah. <laughs> Funny. This isn't a now issue. It's not a soon issue. Eventually, looking at Twitch, eventually I'm going to learn how to draw a female me. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. Okay. I'm looking at that Steve, and and then I'm looking at my little box here on the bottom right, and it's it, it's not a pressing issue. No, the whole the whole thing kind of needs an overhaul. Yeah. And I I was gonna bring it up earlier, like. Monologue, not really much of a monologue anymore. It's more of a give and take, so... I don't know, something needs to be done about this. And yes, the frame overall... I like the monologue. I, it feels like the Muppet Show. I, 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 think, I think there's nothing we could do about Shap, and I think you made that very clear. Shap is shaptastic. Yeah. I really dig the graphic. It's just the image of me as a man. The, long, the farther I go on my road to transhood, the more it just... It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. So I just wanted to bring it up. It won you, you, you give me the picture and okay. it's pretty much a done deal. Okay. One positive I can say about Corona Zombies, it's 60 minutes and 31 seconds long. How much longer does it need to be? Yes. You know, good for you. And I, and I like the idea of the film, and I do think more people should get old movies and redub them. I think that you could get the giant claw and redub it to be about some sort of angry Muppet kaiju. And he used to be a small Muppet, and he got pissed off that so many people were sticking their fist in his asshole that he grew into a large size and is now out for revenge, and the only person that can stop him is a walking, talking sexual harassment lawsuit. Well, it, uh, I think I, we need a little more Backstory about the time when Big Bird was in the Navy. Yeah, you know, conducting experiments. Yeah, and he was, yes, he, he was, Big Bird himself was injected with a lot of chemicals, which did not necessarily affect him. But he was yeah. on shore leave, okay. you know, he was on shore leave one night, and one thing led to another, you know. He was he was spinning the bird feed, and the giant claw was the result of Big Bird's unholy union with Colonel Sanders. You can absolutely do that because the giant yes. claw is public domain, and you don't even have to worry about copyright strikes from like. Incidental music because you're just redubbing the whole thing. I think more people should be doing dubs. I guess is what I'm saying. ten minute warning. Okay. So the coronavirus in this movie began with bat soup. Yes, bat flavored soup. Am I getting that right? Yeah. Yes. From Scamble's Soup. Scamble Scamble Soup Company. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what more can you say about Corona zombies, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it, at least the film is trying to have fun. Next week's movie. There we go. Still, still, the, the other one, 2025, so far. I think is the superior oh. Corona exploitation movie. This 
some tried, and I had some hope for it. Yeah. Well, I think... This movie did not... The best thing I think you could say about this movie is this movie will not just make you angry. One good thing I think you can say about this movie is that it doesn't take itself seriously, like 2025... Yes. A world enslaved by a virus and Mitesh Patel's anti coronavirus. So at least this one's trying to have some fun. They can take our lives, but they can never take our freedom. Yeah. At least this one's fun. I only know the general plot of next week's movie. Uh, I believe it's just called Corona. It's a 2020 film about a group of people stuck in an elevator. Okay. And one of them has the coronavirus, and it's all ad-lib. Doesn't that sound great? And it's all ad-libbed. Oh, my God. (laughs) Man, this is going to be fun. Why do you hate us? Why do you hate us? The theme of the summer is COVID exploitation. There are directors out there that once they saw a worldwide pandemic, the first thing that they came up with is, how can I make a cheap movie that exploits this? So all of the movies we're going to be watching are shit. It yes. says a lot that of all the movies we're watching this summer, the most famous actor is Kevin Nash. Yes. What the fuck? Kevin Nash from the Academy Award winning film Rock of Ages. Yes. Fucking Rock of Ages. Hey, man. Hey, man. No. The monkey is. Hey, man. No, he's not a monkey. <laughs> the monkey is gay, man. Not a monkey. Man, yeah, Arsenal, Arsenal was, was the, the best, best band. How, How much, much do you yeah. think of Wolfgang von yeah. Holt? I, I, well, you haven't seen it yet. This did that thing that I was talking about is finally done, and in Dabney's apartment of oh, yeah. Wolfgang von Colt. Surrounded by some of the worst albums of all time. I want to rock. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I found a small-time punk band that I am obsessed with. Their music is on YouTube, and it's on uh, Spotify. Their band is called Dangerous Nights Crew. They're a small-time punk band, and every song of theirs is based on a different skit from the greatest TV show of all time, I think you can leave with Tim Robbins. I think you should leave with Tim Robbins. I have been listening to them nonstop, and I love them. So shout out to the band Dangerous Nights crew. The, sh- the Netflix show I think you should leave with Tim Robbins in is currently working on season three. And I sincerely hope that the band Dangerous Nights crew is ready to give us a third album. You may want to ask them if they want to take part in our overdub of the Giant Claw. Nice. I'm excited about it. Yeah, because we need to provide the soundtrack. Yeah, we need a band to uh, to uh, What's Up Tiger Lillian. You need to watch that movie. Yes. So much talk about What's Up Tiger Lillian. That movie sucks so bad. It's wonderful. This movie, this movie, this week's movie kind of sucks. Yeah. But that's all I've got for this week's movie. How much can you talk about a 60-minute film? Yeah, no. We almost had a conversation about this week's film that was longer than the film. We have done that before. Our conversation of Plan 9 from Outer Space was longer than Plan 9 from Outer Space, if I'm not mistaken. Well, we didn't really have a discussion of Plan 9 from Outer Space. We did Plan 9 from Outer Space. We did Plan 9 from Outer Space, yeah. We did that. But Wolf Cop... Wolf Cop. Man, they made a sequel of that. I don't think we've ever done it. No, I haven't seen it. I wanted to see it when it was closer to the time where we saw Wolf Cop, but... 
They just they added, added werewolves, werewolves to the Sims 4. Yeah. Sims 4? Yeah, yeah, so everyone's, everyone's on a werewolf, werewolf game right now. Okay. Because of the Sims 4. Uh, that's all I've got for this week's film. Corona Zombies. Uh, it won't hurt you. Fine. Yeah, yeah mostly harm. It's, it's just, just one, one of those, those films that, that like, if like you're it, having a few drinks, drinks with some friends, some friends and you want to watch, watch a bad movie, movie it, it, Corona Zombies. zombies. It's, it's an, an hour. hour. It's, yeah. It's bad on purpose, so it's fine. And if you're hanging out, you might only you might only hear the funny jokes. Yeah, so it's okay. Next week, we're doing the 2020 movie just called Corona. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the same. If I'm not mistaken, it's the same movie that I'm thinking of. The entire film happens in an elevator. It's entirely accurate. And that sounds great. How could that be bad? I... Oh, it's going to be wonderful. And then after that, we'll be doing the Kevin Nash. We'll be doing we'll the Kevin, Kevin Nash, Nash one. one. That's just that's an action, action film that's uh, with some light racism thrown in for fun. With the light racism? Yeah, because... Uh, for, for flavor, you know... COVID-19, a disease uh, ravaging the globe, started with Chinese communists who had sex with a bat. And it's up to an elite team of snipers to stop these dreaded Chinese commies. Is basically the film. Okay. It's an excuse to get Kevin Nash and a gun and to run around and pretend that he can act. So it's so, Rambo Six. Yeah. Uh. God, I hated the last Rambo film. But the scene at the end where he kills everyone. To a song from the doors is a great scene. It's a horrible <laughs> movie with one good scene. Yeah. Just like just like every Rocky film. Just like every Rocky film. Your version of Bloodsport from our monologue would be in the Rocky franchise, the film after Rocky Five, but before all the Creed movies. Yeah. That one where he's like, I'm in my late 50s now. I'm gonna box again. That movie. Yeah. That's what that one would be. So next week, we will be talking about Sesame Street and its dark CD underbelly. And we will be discussing the, what I'm sure is going to be a wonderful film. The, move, the 2020 movie just called Corona about people stuck in an elevator. But now that I'm, that's next week. Now that I'm looking back at this week, the highs and the lows, Dr. Mordred, Vince McMahon being a piece of shit, wooden uh, bombs. I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode. This has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I felt the same way, but I felt that you're the one who makes that distinction. So yes, I concur. Good, sir. So until next week... I'm Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve, and on behalf of Natasha and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathen. And you do swaffles and poopy tits. Avatar. Do 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 Less than a minute. Do 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 do